Heart rate coherence is a pattern of synchronization between the heart rate and the breath, such that the heart speeds up as you breathe in and slows down when you breathe out again. You can see the pattern in this graphic. The red trace is heart rate, measured on a beat-by-beat -beat basis. The green trace is breath. It goes up on the in-breath here, and you can see that the heart rate increases at the same time. And then on the out-breath it slows down again. For convenience, I'll often refer to this variation in heart rate, in other words the red trace, as the heart wave. Heart rate coherence is a very natural and reflex-like response. It's very useful in biofeedback, firstly because research has shown that it correlates with both physical and emotional well-being, and secondly because it's possible to train heart rate coherence so that you can access greater well-being. The body develops heart rate coherence when you're in an open, harmonious and emotionally positive state of mind. However, negative emotions like anxiety and anger tend to disrupt it. The heart wave is strongly influenced by autonomic nervous system functioning. The autonomic nervous system governs many of our automatic and visceral responses. It has two branches, the sympathetic, which is associated with the fight or flight or stress response, and the parasympathetic, sometimes known as the rest and digest response. So the two functions are largely opposite and mutually inhibiting, like a car's accelerator and brake. Heart rate coherence is mainly driven by the parasympathetic branch. The sympathetic, which is activated in anxiety and anger, tends to block the rhythm. How can we measure heart rate coherence? In the software, there are two main measures, called the coherence score and synchrony. These measures between them capture three main characteristics of good coherence. I'll explain these with the help of this graphic, which shows some quite good coherence developing gradually. In the lower chart, the yellow trace is the coherence score. Firstly, the swings in heart rate over the cycle of a breath are relatively large. You can see that the heart speeds up over the in-breath by around 15 breaths per minute. Secondly, the rhythm is consistent over successive cycles. The changes in heart rate are roughly the same size over successive breaths. Thirdly, the breath and the heart wave are tightly coupled. In other words, the peaks occur very close together and the troughs occur very close together. The coherence score measure is based especially on the first two characteristics. The user guide goes into the definition in more detail. The take-home message is that the bigger the amplitude or the height of the heart wave and the more regular it is, the higher the coherence score. I scaled it so that a score of 100 represents very, very good coherence. Don't worry if you don't seem to be able to get close to that. You're not in competition with anyone. In biofeedback, the principle is always work from where you are. Don't get caught up in ideas of where you should be. Heart rate coherence is only visible when you look at the variation over several breaths. For this reason, the coherence score takes some time to calculate, and it's rather slow to change. In this graphic, you can see how the coherence score, the yellow trace in the lower chart, builds up gradually here, in response to this phase of coherence. On the other hand, look what's happening here. The breath has suddenly quickened, and the synchronization has been lost. The coherence score drops rapidly.
Synchrony is a measure of how tightly the heart wave and the breath are coupled. The definition is simply the time difference measured in seconds between the peak of the breath and the peak of the heart wave. Synchrony is shown as the magenta trace in the lower chart. It's calculated once per breath and is either positive or negative. The bold line here is zero. It's positive when the breath peaks before the heart wave and negative when the heart wave peaks first. You can see that in this period the breath is consistently leading the heart wave. Whereas here they're more together. The closer the trace is to the central zero line, the more closely coupled are the heart wave and the breath. Another way of assessing heart rate coherence is via a method called spectral analysis. The results of spectral analysis are shown in one of the charts in the application. The details of the method are rather technical. The main point is that when you're in good coherence, you see a single sharply defined peak in the green area of the chart like this, as compared to this, which is what you see when there is little or no coherence. So how do you access heart rate coherence? What do you actually do to encourage its growth? The first point to make is that, as I've already said, heart rate coherence is a reflex-like response. You can't make it happen by strength of will. Instead, it's a matter of creating the right conditions, allowing it to flow, or entrusting the body's intelligence. What are the conditions in which heart rate coherence will grow? There are two areas to consider. Firstly, slow diaphragmatic breathing, or abdominal breathing, and secondly, positive emotion. I've said that in heart rate coherence, the heart wave becomes synchronized with the breath. It's a kind of resonance, in the sense that the effect appears to be maximized at around six breaths per minute. This is quite a slow rate of breathing. The average is at least twice as fast. In this graphic, you can see that the breath is slower here compared to here and the coherence is stronger. So it helps to allow the breath to slow down and also to allow it to come from deep down in the belly. Fully let go of all your muscles on the out breath so that the breath goes all the way out. Don't be tempted to over breathe. Keep the breaths relatively gentle. The second important area is positive emotion. I mentioned earlier that negative emotions like anxiety and frustration tend to block the rhythm. Positive emotions like appreciation, love and kindness have the opposite effect. They augment the rhythm. How do you generate positive emotions at times when you don't immediately feel it? Again, you can't force them, but you can use your imagination. Think about people in your life for whom you have positive regard. Bring to mind times in the past when you did feel strong emotions. If you were to feel like that again, what would your body feel like? Another method is to focus on what seems relatively positive within this present moment. For instance, your hands might feel soft and relaxed, or you might be enjoying the fact that it's quiet, or just the thought that you don't have anything to do. In every moment, we always have that choice, either focus on what's wrong or on good feelings. Look for a positive, optimistic and hopeful sense of the future. Find what works for you. The process is never mechanical. The challenge is to keep it alive and fresh. The heart rate coherence applications user guide goes into more detail than I've had time for here.